You're in the Business Insurance Zone with me, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician. This week on The Biz, our monthly update series for June 2013. And on today's show, the Insurance Industry Update with special guest Eric Palmer, nationally recognized insurance industry expert. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant, and we're broadcasting to a nationwide audience of financial advisors right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's largest fountain. And with me today, all that is millennial, the Eric Palmer. And Eric, you know, I have to say, you know, that we're look at all the cool people that your age group that are now influencing our generation. Bobby Samuelson. Right. Cheryl Moore. Right. Right. I mean, Maria Umbach. I mean, these are people that are under four. I mean, just unbelievable. And these are already experts in their field at this age. Well, you know what? It's a heck of an opportunity. And I think that it, it's, uh, it needs to keep growing. We need to see a little bit more youth in our industry. And, and think about what it represents. You know, we're, some of the stuff we're going to talk about today even is reflective of this. Mm -hmm. You know, they say that the, the current baby boomer marketplace or the current retirement marketplace represents somewhere around $13 trillion in overall assets. But they say that the Gen X, Gen Y combo is going to represent somewhere around $28 trillion mm -hmm. in assets. So, you know, getting to know this generation and being this generation and understanding mm -hmm. how to apply, uh, you know, insurance techniques or retirement techniques uh, to what we're doing now is going to put you know folks in their 30s and 40s in a better position to actually be able to retire and not be uh, uh, concerned uh, quite as much as the baby boomer generation is. Well, and there and the baby boomers, as I am one, are very concerned about what's going on. And in my last op-ed piece last week, I busted a blog out on this very issue that we are up against it. We've been paying our, the tuition for our kids to go to college. We are now paying our parents in their long-term care facilities. And for the first time in two generations, we're paying, we have not paid down our mortgage. Right. So right. we're taking into our retirement years a mortgage which never was the game plan. So there's issues going on right now. And in fact, actually, let's talk about Gen X. What are they doing? Because we have an article that we read last month that I wanted to blog on. And so I wanted to talk about it not only because Eric represents the, that whole millennial thinking, but I want to be able to come to you and say, listen, there's a whole market we're not touching. Not only are we not recruiting agents, and I think the carriers are now, just now, starting to come to this, wow, if we don't get another sales force, start recruiting a huge sales force here, we're going to be really short. And when you talk about 20, how did you say, 28 trillion? Right. That the millennial generation, that's a, that's a chunk of change, bigger than the boomers. So you, we have to start addressing these issues. Interesting enough, Gen X, they talk about Gen X being what in retirement savings? Behind or ahead? Well, they actually say Gen X is behind, and, and it's interesting because I read, I read a lot of material on how Gen Y, which is just behind them, are actually doing a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like they've learned the lesson uh, ahead of time as they've, you know, Gen, Gen mm -hmm. Y's in particular, under age 33 or so, uh, have, have seen these market crashes. Mm -hmm. They're starting to realize there's, there's different ways and, and there's a need for saving beyond just believing in that 401k. Gen mm -hmm. X, I think, had the unfortunate... Uh, uh, along with the baby boomers, unfortunate exposure of the 90s and the early 2000s when the markets still were doing very well and four, mm -hmm. 401ks looked very good in the form of the returns they were getting mm -hmm. and nobody behind the scenes was telling any, anybody anything about the mechanical problems mm -hmm. or the structural problems with qualified plans. Paying all the taxes in lump sums as you receive your income is not an, a, an even exchange for being allowed to have tax deferral. Mm -hmm. You know, that sort of misnomer, mm -hmm. I think, has, has clouded baby boomers and Gen X, and we thought that the 401k was fine and we were doing everything right. When we look at some of the pensions, not all of them, but many of our pensions, defined contribution plans included, we have seen that we're just now getting back to even after the 2008 debacle. Now think about it, if I took me four to five years to break even on this and return, I'm looking at that number. How bad was it then if it took us that long to get back to par? Well, I think about this. We're, it, it, it goes all the way back to, to one of the quotes I use quite often, you know, uh, John Vogel with, with you know, the former CEO of mm -hmm. Vanguard. 
you know, he, he made a statement about mutual funds and how, you know, the average mutual mm -hmm. funds over a 10 year period of time, I think it was something like uh, uh, 2000 or 99 mm -hmm. to, to uh, uh, 2008 and 2009 to 2010, you know, the average mutual fund had something around a 13% rate of return, but the average investor's re average return was 2.3%. The mm -hmm. bottom line is, is we're never in the right place at the right time, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to equity based investing. So, you know, we can see statistically there's a lot of recovery in the markets from 2008, but mm -hmm. were you making the right moves as those recoveries were happening mm -hmm. and were you in the right sectors? Most mm -hmm. of us weren't. So we didn't get the return, so therefore it took us four or five years to get the, you know, back from what we lost in the mm -hmm. beginning. And imagine if you were about to retire at that period of time and you were counting on that defined mm -hmm. benefit plan. You're not retiring mm -hmm. anymore. You're you're working into your 70s. Oh, that's true. And when you think about that, I, and I felt this. I saw this happen in October 1988 when we had our first what we call considerable crash. That day, I'll never forget. I was a young a registered representative. I had my securities license maybe two and a half, three years. That was as dark as it got. I never thought we'd see that day again, much less a whole year. Right. So when we look at this, this is why people say, well, Steve, you know, you guys seem to be promoting insurance every time you look at it. Well, there's reasons for this, and I just gave you one. Right. That's why I'm saying not everybody is built in their psychological makeup for a beta risk that the market can bring on. And in the last decade, when you see 2001, two and three, and 2008, those were punitive years to be in the S&P. So I'm just trying to give you a heads up. One of the reasons why we think indexing is an alternative to defined contribution plans is because, yes, I don't get the deduction, but I say half of Americans don't even need it. Right. It's so small, and I'm giving up my Social Security benefits going free because my my qualified plan is going to tax it. Well, and we live in a high-frequency trading environment. We, we, we no longer can really control mm -hmm. the volatility in the market. So when you're exposed to that much extreme volatility mm -hmm. in a variety of market segments, whether it's technology mm -hmm. or commodities, you know, that's that's a pretty scary place to be relying on mm -hmm. for, for guaranteed retirement income. And I just, again, it sounds like we're pushing our own horse here, but honestly, I'm looking at the mathematics. If this is done correctly, this can be huge for a client and, remember, some protection at the back door. When we come back from the break, we're going to continue our monthly industry update for June 2013 with Eric Palmer. And don't forget, enroll in IULUniversity.com. It's the best training, education, and sales support when it comes to life insurance for retirement income. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Did you know the average 401k runs out of money just seven to eight years into retirement? Time Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, and many other publications have warned of the difficulty of saving with a 401k. But what if there was a way to create tax-free lifetime retirement income with no stock market risk? Good news, there is. You know, living in fear of the next market dive is not the way I want to live my life. Why would I go out there and take on risk when I don't need to? I have a lot less stress knowing I can't lose any more of my retirement savings in the stock market. Call now to receive your free, no obligation analysis of what this retirement vehicle could do for you. A comparison to your current retirement plan and a free video that explains this exciting opportunity. Start planning a retirement you can enjoy instead of worrying about future tax increases and stock market losses. Creating income that will last your entire life is the most important thing you'll ever do. Take control of your future. Call now for your free analysis, comparison, and video. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant with Eric Palmer. And remember, you can order today's materials, any of these articles you want, just hop out to our site, www.thebiz.tv, and just sign and say, hey, I want those articles off the insurance update show for June 2013. While you're out there, hit the backroom technician icon for the 30-day free trial offer for the best material, and it's a great for an analysis, client education. I've been using it for 22 years of my practice, and much of our giveaways on the shows have been right off backroom technician. And I think they're selling it through our vendor right now, through our deal, $50 a month, you can't go wrong. And remember, before moving forward with anything in our show, always consult your tax advisor and legal counsel, as well as your broker dealer compliance officer, if you're FINRA licensed. And you know what, you may wanna be in the next years to come because there is a lot of traffic out there that VUL might be making a comeback. We'll see. I'm not going right. to hold my breath. Right. Well, we're talking, we're in the middle of our insurance industry update. We're talking about certain things. And here's an article that I thought, now I've been married almost 
40 years. I know they probably said to the same girl, by the way. <laughs> we looked at an article called Financial Tips for Newlyweds. I was shocked when I went back and asked a couple pastors that are supposed to do premarital counseling, hey, do you talk about money when you're counseling young people? And they said no. They should. They should. <laughs> it's the number two divorce issue. Sexual impropriety, number one, but number two, that's about money. Do we have the same commonality? Do we have the same future? Are we going to be able to do things together as a right. couple? We do not do this, and I think this is a huge tragedy. I mean, it's bad enough we're not teaching our little kids just the basic issues of here's a checking account, here's how to save, here's to put money in your piggy bank. Now, when we're getting married, we're not giving the tools that will help success and help keep people away from arguments, endless arguments that will really cost your marriage. Well, I think that's a, that's a really good point. You know, at the end of the day, we also have to look at, you know, you know, what does the demographic do today as far as their own personal finances? Most of us are ba built on an electronic world. So I'm not balancing a checkbook anymore. In, mm -hmm. in fact, I don't balance any ledgers anymore. My Wells Fargo account balances it for me mm -hmm. and I could break it down by industry of what I'm purchasing, my purchasing habits. But the reality is most consumers out there today in that electronic banking world mm -hmm. don't pay a whole lot of attention to, to a lot of detail. They just know that there's, there's money in and there's money out. Mm -hmm. So we take these two individuals that are getting married and coming together in this electronic world, they, they very much already don't have an understanding mm -hmm. altogether of how they're balancing their budgets individually. So coming together, it, it becomes even worse. And so it's hard to integrate that those two sort of mindsets mm -hmm. and, and counseling on that probably would be very beneficial for them because most people, again, their parents aren't, the baby boomers aren't even mm -hmm. telling them how to, to save for retirement. I took, off backroom technician, one of our vendors, I took their divorce checklist, it's a planning, and I did it in reverse. I just took it and flipped it. And I said, if we would have addressed these questions on the divorce list, checklist, right. and actually made that a premarital counseling for finance, half of those issues wouldn't have been on the table. So all I'm saying is, is when you're doing financial planning and you're talking to young people and say, hey, you know, they, they don't really don't have any assets and everything, your education and setting the tone for up front in their marriage could be huge for not only your practice, but handing that practice on to somebody else that's young as well. This is where we need to go. Our young people getting married, our children, they need to know about money. Well, listen to this. This is another thing that was on the wire and I just jumped on this because Right in the middle, we're just coming out of the worst uh, recession we've ever had in modern times, and life insurance numbers on total sales are through the roof. Right. Shocking, shocking. Now remember, not the industry at large, but the players that are in the market, think about it, there's like 700 plus carriers in the United States alone, but about 60 to 70 of them are seeing serious numbers going up. And one of them, Eric, is one of the areas, it's called using life insurance for supplemental income for retirement planning. Absolutely. Well, the education is starting to get out there. You know, we know that uh, we've been putting videos out for right. years and we get a lot of traffic now off of YouTube. In fact, we get a lot of clients off of YouTube simply by the fact that they're doing research about something they've heard of, mm -hmm. index you well. Uh, so the word's starting to get out there. Now, what's interesting, if you look over the history of time, life insurance has always been the number one most consistent and dominant cash performance player and, and cash leverage player as far as an asset goes. But today, it means a little something more, mm -hmm. especially because we're coming out of this era of believing that 401ks are the right choice mm -hmm. and we're starting to look for alternatives. But most alternatives fit within that equities bucket. There's not a whole lot of mm -hmm. out, you know, outside the box, if you will, type, type options for people. And so when you learn about life insurance, you're more apt to want to see your own numbers. And I think that's starting to reflect in the, in the increases in premium. And I think you're going to see this continue as people understand the power of supplemental income using life insurance. And of course, remember, if it's done right, that tax advantage, as long as the contract's kept in force for the life of the insured, this could be huge. Right. There's another article, and I did not know they were bifurcating the baby boomer market now. I didn't know this was happening. If you're born in 1946 to 1964, you're a boomer. Now they're saying, oh, now we're splitting that demographic into young boomers and older boomers. Apparently, I'm an older boomer. Now, when they say this, the article led says they're now starting younger boomers, right, from about the 19, uh, late 59 up to 64 are now looking at annuities. Well, and they should be. You know, I think the, the biggest thing is getting your money parked into a safety zone. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a whole lot of options in the bottom of the pyramid anymore. Most of us in our financial planning uh, 
education process. We learn about the, the bonds mm -hmm. and the fixed treasuries and the guaranteed asset type investments we make at the bottom of the pyramid because those are more in the green, they're more mm -hmm. conservative, more reliable. Well, those interest rates are at the bottom. And so mm -hmm. indexed annuities in particular and some multi-year guaranteed and fixed annuities offer you the opportunity to get a little bit better return than that. And that's becoming sort of the new norm to, to fix the, the latter years of the race mm. so that you're making sure that you actually have money left over when you get there. Well, think about it. And another trend that I can hardly believe is true. This article says that Americans are finally setting their sights on long-term planning. I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, talk about an ADD society, long-term planning. We'll see. Well, that's our show for today. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or email me, steve at thebiz.tv. That's the buzz on the biz for today. You've been in the zone, the business insurance zone. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use.